All right, in this recording, we're going to be going over lines uh, in book one of the Aeneid, 124 through 141. And what we see, absolute chaos, absolute destruction of weather on the sea and ravaging the 20 ships of Aeneas. And all of a sudden, the guy who that's his territory notices it. And he's going to intervene. Interior. Meanwhile, that's our subject. Neptune has noticed. An important verb to know. From the principal parts, sentio, sentire, fourth conjugation, sensi, sensus. And it means to notice or to feel or even to sense. Meanwhile, he noticed, perfect tense, and now we have indirect statement. Remember that when it comes to indirect statements, present infinitives would indicate same time. Perfect infinitives indicate an action before our main verb that introduces it, mental action, and future is going to be after. And so since we start in the past with saints it, our first infinitive is miscari, which is a present infinitive. So therefore, the act of mixing, miscao miscere, miscui mixtus, happens at the same time. So meanwhile, Neptune noticed that the Pontem, remember we just had that word, it is the sea, that the sea, same time, present, was mixed, has been mixed with a great murmur. In other words, he notices that it's going to be a ruckus going on. Que, and he noticed that a winter storm, he aims, is the winter, emissam. Now, again, in real Latin. Whenever you have a perfect infinitive, very often, that essay will not be overtly written. It will just merely be implied. But here, meto metere misi misus, to send out. Add that essay to it to be the infinitive. It would be perfect, which means we have to occur before the noticed. He noticed that a winter storm had da -da 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 set out. And he noticed that stagna, the pools of water, it's where we get the word stagnant. Refusa, from fundo fundere fudi fusus. And again, you add an essay, it makes it a perfect infinitive. He noticed that the pools of water had been poured back from the lowest. Remember, imus al um is the lowest. It's a regular, weird, defective superlative. Shallows, wadis. And that the pools of water had been poured back from the lowest shadow, shallows. Lowest shallows. He, having been moved gravely as an adverb, and prospician, spicio, spician, and looking out from the deep, he brought out his calm head, placidum caput, from the ablative highest wave. And so it's as though he were, I will show you, and almost every year, over here, it's as though, you're good, he would be right below the sea, you cannot see them, and all of a sudden, here comes the Neptune. What's going on up here? And that is the way it is described and what it would look like in the scene. And what does he see when he pokes his head out? He sees the classem, the fleet of Aeneas, but that fleet having been scattered, disyectam, having been thrown, yakio yakare, on the whole sea. That's only the first thing that he sees. Direct object number one. He also sees the Trojans, direct object number two, having been overwhelmed, o prima o primere, by the waves and by the ruin of the sky. Kaili. And the doli. Now please do not confuse the word dolus doli and the word dolor doloris. The bottom word means pain or grief. The top word means trick. They are similar, but please make sure you know whether it is second declension or third. And that's, of course, where we get the word condolences, when you feel grief with, cone, someone else. He sees the Trojans having been overwhelmed by the waves and by the ruin of the sky, and the tricks of Juno, and the angers. So here we have nominative plural, nominative plural, of Juno did not hide from the brother. It really, la tuere, it's going to mean like deceive, like when you hide from something from someone. They did not deceive, and it's perfect alternate ending, erut, her brother. So he knows, he, he can see the fingerprints of Juno all over this. He wokots, he calls, the wind urus, 
and the wind zephyr to him, himself. And from here, Behi means from this point, he fought towards. I think this might be the second or third time we've seen this, if not the first. Incredibly important and often used verb by Virgil. Deponent from for fari fatus sum. It means to speak. And you can see a great derivative from this in the word of the not speaking one. So if I were to turn it into a present active participle, infons, infantis. So at what point does a baby no longer be considered an infant? When it starts speaking. And so, for far fatisum. Looks passive, translates actively. And he says, he speaks, talia, such things. So 132, let me scroll up. And this is what he said. We notice that our verb is perfect. So if we're asking a question, let's start out with a perfect helping verb. Did or has. Let's go with has. Has tanta. And the ne, remember, just implies a question. Has such a confidence. That's what fiducia is. Has such a, 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 I guess confidence is really the word. Brashness, confidence. Has so great a confidence of y'all's race. Hell jaw? Now, what does that mean? Has so great a confidence of y'all's race, hell jaw. In other words, he's asking winds just because you're immortal, just because you are who you are as your, your, your genetic makeup, that you think that you have the authority to get away with what you're doing. In other words, he's accusing these winds of the, of the classic when somebody gets pulled over. Do you know who I am? That is the sort of attitude he's accusing these winds of. So has so great a confidence of your race, hell jaw? Now, y'all dare, this is a semi-deponent. Aldeo, aldeare, alsus, sum. And what that means is that for the green tenses, present, imperfect, and future, the forms will look active, translate to active, there'll be no passive, but for the brown tenses, perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect, they will look passive, but still translates actively. So that's why it's a semi-deponent. It's not quite a full deponent. Do not confuse it with the verb that means to hear. It means to be bold or to dare. So, now, y'all dare in the present tense. You've got to ask the question. You see the E as a second conjugation. Y'all dare to mix together the sky and the earth and to lift up tantas moles, so great masses... That's what a moles is. So great ruckuses is, if you would like. Meo sine numine, without my divine authority. And he calls them out vocatively, winds. So now winds, y'all dare to mix together the sky and land and to lift up tola tolere, such great masses without my divine authority, without my permission. Masses, which I, and then we have an apoziopesis. Remember the positive pieces is an ab which I said. He interrupts himself. He's getting carried away in his anger, but then he draws back, takes a deep breath, kind of like sometimes our parents get so angry at us and just yelling, ah! then they have to step back and say, all right, I'll deal with this later. Right now, let's fix this thing that you've screwed up. But, pri-stat, it stands first. Literally, it's more important. Sto stare pri. It is more important, it stands first, to compose the waves having been moved. So instead of continuing to yell, he's got to fix. So let's say that you, you, you make a huge mess in the kitchen because you're trying to make something and you spill flour. Your mom comes in and starts yelling at you, what in the world? And then she notices, like, you know, I better put out the fire that's over here <laughs> that's about to burn our house down. And so that's what he does. But it stands first to compose the moved waves. Afterwards... Future, luo, luere, and it means like to pay a penalty or pay something. Y'all will pay the offenses, and so it means like pay for the accusative things you've done, and that's what commis is when you commit a crime. You will pay the offenses to me, known simile poina, with not similar punishment. What he's saying is that right now you get a talking to. Next time it will not be a talking to. He then commands them, 
Mature your flight. Now, what does it mean to mature something? It means to, like, make it happen now. In other words, get out of here. And say or speak these things to y'all's king. So go back and let Aeolus know. And so it's a situation whereby, like, for example, if in my room another teacher has told some student to start doing something, like rearranging my books or furniture or something, I would not only yell at the student, but I would then instruct him, go back to that teacher that told you to do this and let them know. Don't come in here. Material flight and say these things to y'all's king. The Imperium Pelagi, another word for the sea, Pelagus. That's why there are some sharks that are known as pelagic sharks. They are in the open waters, in the open seas. The power of the sea and the savage trident, which of course is the reposition of power, it, datum, and then essay. Again, we are in indirect statement, as introduced by Dicate. So, tell him that the power of the sea and the savage trident, datum essay, has been given not to that guy, Iolus, but to me by lot by the drawing of straws. When Jupiter assumed the powers, the king of the gods, unlike the predecessor, Saturn, and his grandfather predecessor, Uranus, he shared the power of the universe. And so, when they drew lots to determine who would be in charge of what, Neptune got the sea. And that is why he says, it has been given to me by lot, not to Aeolus. He can do whatever he wants to with those winds in his cave. Me on the sea, it goes through me. So again, if the teacher has already told me that the student would come in here and rearrange my stuff, and I'm like, okay with it, that'd be different. But apparently they've done it without permission. He goes on to explain. Let me scroll up just slightly. There we go. So, here we are. That guy, referring to Aeolus, he holds teneo teneare, second conjugation, so present, the huge rocks. Remember, we just had recently imanus, imanus, imane. And that, of course, is rocks. So that guy holds the huge rocks. Now, this is merely an appositive. It would be, of course, Westros Domos. What are those huge rocks? Y'all's is homes. Again, Wester, Westra, Westrum. Please don't confuse it with the word for winds. Winds are wintus. And he's talking directly to Eurus. So, hey, Eurus, that guy holds the huge rocks. Y'all's homes, you know, where, of course, they're imprisoned in the cave. And here we have a present subjunctive. It's yakto yaktare. So here, we fear a giant liar. And so when you have it in a present subjunctive, and it is the main verb, it's not in a subordinated clause, you don't see a kum or an ut or any other word that could subordinate it, it is what we call the jussive subjunctive. And you translate it not he throws, but rather, let him throw. It's kind of like a command. That's why it's called Joseph from uvio uvere uciusis. Let him, as in Aeolus, let Aeolus throw about, remember it's frequentative, himself, illa, in aula, in that palace. That's what an aula is. Please don't confuse it with the word for altar, ara, or the word for breeze, aura, which breeze would look like this, and you can see why students often do confuse the two. Let him throw himself about, let Aeolus throw himself about in that palace and another subjunctive, because this also is regno regnare, we fear giant liar, so therefore, and let him rule, regno regnare, in the prison, having been enclosed, so in the enclosed prison of the winds, windhorum, not the same as wester, westra, westrum, which means yalses, and so in this way he is saying, Aeolus has his own area, own sphere of influence. This is mine, and y'all need to get out of here. And so therefore, that is what we have. All right, that's it.